What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 44 and we start today's episode off with a game against Fulham here in the Barclays Premier League and of course just before that you would have seen Jack Rose, our third choice of goalkeeper, only 60 overall asking to play in this game. Not just get on the bench, which he never even gets to anyway, but to actually start the game ahead of our captain, Ben Foster, and I was like... No, I just, you know, I like the idea of players coming to you and requesting that if they're in good form, for example, or if it's a game in the Capital One Cup or a, a competition where you don't seem to prioritize your first team players. I like the idea of a, a sort of reserve fringe player coming to you and saying, hey, could you give us a chance in this game? But I think it's a bit ridiculous to ask for a game in the Premier League against, you know, okay, a newly promoted side, Fulham, but even so, it's, it's a Premier League game, it is our main focus, and you're asking to take out the captain. I mean, that's a bit, bit of a bizarre request don't you think but uh, still we do take on Fulham uh, for today's game and of course as I said there Fulham are a newly promoted side so far doing the best out of the other uh, two newly promoted sides that came up out of Fulham, Norwich and who was the other one? Watford. Uh, Fulham are the highest in the league position at the moment but again I, I want to say this I, I don't know why this is but sometimes the league table doesn't get shown before the games um, and for that I apologise I guess because I always used to do that I always used to show you the table and, and there you go in previous FIFA's that was how I did it I'd show the table before the game and the two um, um, the two team lineups, but for some reason the table doesn't always get shown, so sorry about that. But uh, still, we do take on Fulham, and the first chance fell here directly from kickoff. Fulham give the ball away, the ball comes to Danny Ings, he cuts it back towards Mbaini Yang, the danger man. And you might be hearing that phrase over the next few episodes, because this guy who has been on a very, very decent run of form of late, scores again and makes it West Bromwich Albion 1, Fulham nil with the first attack and the first shot of the game as well. It is Niang, and of course with Brown today's season ending injury, and with Berahino still on the treatment table at the moment Niang is part of a makeshift strike partnership right now and the guy is just profiting massively you know when I signed this guy my plan was to have him playing on the left side of the wing possibly on the right side but usually on the left side to cut inside or sometimes cross with weaker left foot but you know He's playing up front right now, and he's just scoring goals after goals. The guy is fantastic, and he makes it 1-0 here. Very, very pleasing to see. And in the 25th minute, Fulham come through themselves here. Hugo Rodiega finding Ross McCormack. McCormack strikes it, but the former lead striker puts it wide, and he goes out for a goal kick. So still 1-0, and a good chance for the visitors there to get themselves an equaliser. But in the 40th minute, Jason Davidson comes forward for us, the Australian who strikes it from range, and it goes just over the bar and out for a goal kick. So a bit of a makeshift team, really, obviously, with us. At the moment, you know, trying to rotate as many players as possible because we are in a, a, a tough run of fixtures, really, and you know we need to make sure that everyone gets a chance to play. And as you can see, as a few players that weren't, you know, regular first team players, but one which is Wellington Silver, who was starting this game, did win us a penalty in the second half, pretty much directly from kickoff in the 48th minute. A couple of nice five-star skills. He then got taken down by his man K Vossa, and the referee has no choice but to award a penalty and book the Fulham number 15. So penalty to West Bromwich Albion. Love Lovely from Wellington Silver using those five star skills and a great chance to extend the lead from the spot and make it 2 0. It's going to be the goalkeeper against um, Craig Gardner. That's who it's going to be. Craig Gardner, of course, who I have started to use a bit more this season as well because I do really like him, to be honest. It's Gardner against Stecklenburg and Gardner hits the post. And that was a real, real let off for Fulham there because I should have finished a chance. You know, that was a, an easy, you know, the fact is I've scored most of my penalties throughout this series, which is a surprise for me, I know. But even so, I, I should have scored that chance I should have made it 2-0 uh, I didn't and that gave Fulham a chance in the second half to come through themselves and see if they could score themselves an equaliser after we basically let them off the hook really and they did because after that penalty they were the team that were attacking at will and if it wasn't for Ben Foster making a couple of really good saves you can see why Jack Rose didn't start this game obviously Ben Foster making a couple of really good saves Fulham would have been level here and they come through again in the 70th minute David plays a great through ball to Ross McCormack McCormack collects the ball I'm standing off him I'm standing off him he takes aim and again Foster palms the ball away for a corner so still West Brom 1 Fulham 0 but it was the newly promoted side who were having all of the chances in the second half and a real show of you know determination to get themselves back in the game another great chance here as Kavanagh comes forward here down the left hand side cuts it inside and Hutchinson shot what a save again by Ben Foster and we get the ball away so Fulham doing everything they could in front of we got on the counter attack James Wilson gets on the ball on loan from United finds Wellington Silva surely we're going to make it 2-0 
Some nice skill, we'll get myself inside, but again, Stecklenburg makes the save and it's cleared away by Fulham. So he's still 1 0, could have killed the game off there, but Fulham were relentless with their pressure. And as David finds Hutchinson, he chips it inside, Hugo Rodiega strikes it, and again, we're reliant on our skiffer Ben Foster to make an absolutely fantastic save at the death here. It's still West Bromwich Albion 1, Fulham 0, but Fulham wouldn't let go of the pressure. They won themselves a corner here. Everyone came forward for it. It's Williams. He swings the ball into the centre. And Hugo Rodiega heads it in and makes it one apiece with virtually the last attack of the game. And I was just sitting there thinking, that is just so, so, so frustrating. Because I, I genuinely felt as though we'd done enough to secure the three points. Foster was in great form from the corner. It's not really dealt with. Foster himself probably should have done better there. He came to punch the ball and didn't get onto it. The defence was really poor in terms of marking and out jumping Rodiega. But it was Hugo Rodiego who headed it past the goalkeeper and made it 1-1 with the stoppage time equaliser. So a very disappointing point there. I mean, you know, we scored really early on. We conceded really late on. And that's so frustrating. You know, we missed a penalty as well. We should have sewn that game up. We should have made sure we were tighter in defence. And we weren't. And that's that's two points dropped. You know, I mean, I like, to, I, I like to try and be positive in what I say. And I like to say, oh, it's one point gained against a decent Fulham side. But really, it's not. It's two points dropped. We should have won that game. And it should have been another win for us in the Premier League and of course that was on the uh, that was before this game against Napoli here in the final Europa League game so that's why I rested a lot of players I wanted a strong team for this game I played a 4-5-1 uh, like I did away in Italy because I wanted to try and close out the gaps in this game and of course in this game final we're taking on Torpedo Moscow you know who have been pretty much the whipping boys of this group we'd all expect the Dutch side to beat them uh, to beat the Russians and so you know we if we get a point in this game it doesn't matter what final do we qualify but if final beat Torpedo Torpedo Moscow by two or three goals, which, you know, let's be honest, they, they're more than capable of doing that, then we ourselves would probably need to get ourselves at least a point, because if Napoli scored tonight, which they probably would, they could easily score another two or three, and that could see us lose out on goal difference. So, because of that, as we take on Napoli, we have to be aware of the fact that Feyenoord, you know, in the back of our mind, Feyenoord playing Torpedo Moscow isn't a fixture we can just say, well, we don't care about it, you know, we need to f focus on what they're doing as well, as well as what we do, but of course, we still know that fate is in our own hands. One point sends us through. So we take on Napoli here, and the first chance did fall to the away side as they come forward. The cross well saved by Foster there, and we get the ball away. And they made a very, very fast start in this game. As Rondon finds Insigne here, a quick little back heel into Rondon, then finds Hamshik. Hamshik finds Insigne, lovely passing, and it's the worst possible start of the Hawthorns, because Lorenzo Insigne makes it West Bromwich Albion nil, Napoli won, nine minutes in. And it's just diabolical for us to have this kind of start because we couldn't afford it. We're already 1-0 down. And we know that if final do beat Torpedo Moscow by a few goals, we could see us going out of the group stage in the last game. So Napoli won, West Bromwich Albion nil. Absolutely terrible start for us here at the Hawthorns. And the following chance fell here in the 16th minute as Victor and each of you collects the ball. He gets onto it here. He's a lone striker in this game, so not much support, but he's got enough pace and power to get round the two centre-backs. He keeps on going, holds the ball up, finds Fabian Delph. Delph finds Niang, and it's by Niang, the danger man, who scores again and makes it West Bromwich Albion 1, Napoli 1. So we are back on level terms, and it just had to be the man in form. It just had to be the man properly it in through Brown today, season ending injury and Berahino's injury right now as well it is Niang who gets the goal and it was so composed but the man you want to thank for that goal is Victor Anichibi, you know one of the reasons I really like Anichibi he's 74 overall so not the best but one of the reasons I really like him is because he's such a great target man to support, he holds the ball up so well, it's exactly what we did, he just made, made sure he knew that you know he could drag the centre backs towards him, then wait for a runner he picked one out in Delph, Delph finds Niang and Niang finds the bottom corner so it's another goal for Mbai Niang, who just can't stop scoring at the moment. And it is West Bromwich Albion 1, Napoli 1. So great to be back on level terms here at the Hawthorns. And of course, because as things stood, this point would make sure that no matter what happened in the game between Feyenoord and Torpedo Moscow, we would be going through in second place. But Napoli, well, they really were relentless in their pressure. And Ben Foster, who made a couple of brilliant saves in the game against Fulham, makes an absolutely fantastic one here to deny uh, Napoli's captain, Marek Hamšík. So captain v captain here. And it's Ask skipper that comes out on top. Brilliant save by Ben Foster as he turns the ball behind for a corner. And from the corner it is Hamshik who basically won the corner who crosses the ball in towards Gokken Inler at the far post. Heads it backwards and Insigne's header is cleared off the line by Aaron Creswell and we get the ball away. So still 1-1. 
But as you can see, all the pressure was coming through the Italians. Another great chance here and yet another great save by Ben Foster. He denies Rondon with a very, very good save there. And at halftime, as you can see, Torpedo Moscow were losing to final by a goal to nil. I, I hate the goal updates on this game. It's been like this ever since they introduced them. They, they don't show up all the time. So we knew final would be in Torpedo Moscow. So as things stood, even if we were to lose this game, we'd still be going through uh, technically on goal difference as scores stood as they were. But as we were drawing the game, we were going through regardless of what happened and we almost took the lead in the 50th minute there Chris Brunt's corner was won with the header by I think it was Niang and it was saved by the goalkeeper and cleared away and 10 minutes later a great chance for Napoli it's Rondon on the ball for them he shoots and he puts the ball wide and the traveling fans almost celebrated but thankfully the ball did go wide and it was out for a goal kick and in the 68th minute you see Fabian Delph wins the ball back here and Anicci he holds it up he spots the run at Delph and Delph goes down the left hand side Napoli desperate to score themselves a winner left too many bodies forward and as Delph keeps on going he ends up going one on one and chipping the ball over the goalkeeper and making it West Bromwich Albion 2 Napoli 1 and Delph you know we, we've had some great players this season obviously Niang's been a great signing a day before his injury was the best player of the team no doubt about that Foster's been a great captain Zambrano's been a very good signing for us but Fabian Delph is just the underrated player the unsung hero of this West Brom side because he just intercepts so many passes he makes so many tackles and he's got such a great amount of energy 89 stamina which of course I love I love my players of high stamina and Delph is just a perfect box to box midfielder for us and it showed it there he won us the ball back went up the pitch all on his own he picked the ball up from inside his own half and scored the goal as well to make it 2-1 to West Bromwich Albion and late on in the game Napoli had a corner and Foster again made a couple of brilliant saves in quick succession as we get the ball away Napoli kept the pressure on desperate for an equalising goal here to make sure they wouldn't lose the final group stage game but they could didn't get it. The game finished. West Bromwich Albion 2, Napoli 1. It's a famous win at the Hawthorns. Of course, a point would have been enough for us to qualify. Even a loss by just one or two goals would have been as well. But even so, we cap off the group stage in style. We win the final game, and what a fantastic performance. 2-1 against Napoli. We soaked up the pressure. We played great counter-attack in football, and two good goals by Niang and Delft mean that we do win the last game. So even though final beat Torpedo Moscow, we are through to the Europa League knockout stages in second place. Fantastic result. And as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.